there's a new Matrix movie coming out just this week. But you could be forgiven for getting the whole story of The Matrix because the last one came out a long time ago. Well, that's why here on Carl's Movie Film Show, I'm Carl, by the way, we're going to recap the entire story of The Matrix so far so you don't have to go through all those movies before you watch the new one. So let's kick it off with The Matrix, the first one, the original, the one that set the whole thing in motion. In The Matrix, we're introduced to Thomas A. Anderson, a computer hacker who is going to be the one. After following the White Rabbit, Thomas A. Anderson, otherwise known as Neo Online in his hacker alias, is introduced to Trinity, who in turn introduces Neo to Morpheus, which leads to the iconic moment where Morpheus offers Neo a choice of either taking the blue pill or the red pill, a decision which will define his journey. Because if he takes the blue pill, the movie's pretty much over. Luckily, Neo takes the red pill and he's introduced to the world of the Matrix. He's told that there's a war going on between man and machine. And he is told that the Matrix is a prison invented by the machines to house the minds of humans which are being used in the real world by machines. Humans in the real world now are considered by the machines as an energy source, nothing more than a battery. However, a certain rebel alliance of sorts are teaming up and saving humans, getting them out of the matrix, and they're trying to find the one, the one's gonna fulfill the prophecy and save them all from the machines. Inside the matrix, there's programs to keep anomalies in place, to keep humans in place, and there's agents who deal with any problems within the matrix. This leads us to be introduced to Agent Smith, who we'll come back to later on. Now Neo has taken the red pill, he wakes up in the machine world, reborn of sorts, in a kind of weird looking scene, ultimately he ends up with Morpheus' team on the Nebuchadnezzar. They then train Neo inside the Matrix to teach him everything he needs to know, and ultimately Neo ends up knowing Kung Fu. I know Kung Fu. Show me. Neo and Morpheus then face off in an epic training battle as Neo hones his skills. Once he's all trained up, Morpheus takes Neo to the Oracle, an all-seeing woman who knows everything and knows if Neo is the one. Unfortunately, she tells him he is not the one, he's just pretty good. However, on their way back, they encounter two black cats and they realize something is wrong. Along the way, unbeknownst to them, they have been betrayed by one of their team called Cypher, who wants to just be put back in the Matrix, and he's dealing with the agents, helping the agents, so that they'll put him back in the Matrix and make him forget about everything. He wants to take the blue pill. In order to do it, he's gonna betray everybody. Through this, Morpheus ends up getting taken by the agents as the rest of them try to escape. But after a daring rescue involving a helicopter, Neo and Trinity ultimately save Morpheus and escape the agents. Ultimately, Cypher, the one who's betrayed everybody, ends up waking up first on Nebuchadnezzar and ends up attacking the two remaining people on the Nebuchadnezzar tank and dozer, trapping Trinity, the rest of everybody else, Neo and Morpheus all in the Matrix. A surprise, asshole. I bet you never saw this coming. It seems like all is lost until somehow Tank gets up and saves the day, killing Cypher. I don't believe it. <laughs> Believe it or not, you piece of shit, you're still gonna burn. As Neo, Trinity, and Morpheus are about to leave the Matrix, along come more agents. Neo is the last one left in the Matrix, and this ends up with an epic fight between Neo and Agent Smith in a train station. Neo ends up running away, trying to find another landline to escape the Matrix to get back to the Nebuchadnezzar. He runs into a room where a phone is, and he's shot dead on the spot by Agent Smith. He's blasted and blasted and blasted, and it doesn't seem there's any recovery for him. The agents have won. They're walking away, and as they do, out of nowhere, Neo gets up. Neo is suddenly believing he is the one. He uses his newfound power to jump inside Agent Smith and he destroys him from the inside out. The other agents run away and Neo escapes the Matrix. And we just tank Trinity, Morpheus and Neo left on Nebuchadnezzar, the movie ends. But that movie was soon followed up by Matrix Reloaded, a highly anticipated sequel that was always going to be a letdown. The Matrix Reloaded starts with Neo having a vision of Trinity falling to her death. In this movie, we're introduced to Zion and shown that there's more people outside of the Nebuchadnezzar, outside of the Matrix, and more people who are born in the real world. Various ships outside the city of Zion, the last remaining city, are all descending on Zion, but Morpheus insists on leaving one ship behind for one simple reason, that the Oracle is missing 
and he wants to leave a ship behind in case she reaches out. However, this all eventually leads to Neo finding the Oracle. The Oracle then reveals that she isn't actually human, she's a program, but a different kind of program. She's not controlled by the machines. This is where she tells Neo that he has to find the Keymaker. But as soon as the Oracle leaves, we then get the scene with Agent Smith returning. But it's not just one Agent Smith, it's many, many, many Agent Smiths, because he can now duplicate himself. In fact, he's no longer called Agent Smith, from this point on, he's just called Smith. Now we end up with the epic scene where Keanu Reeves, his stunt double, and the CGI version of himself fight a lot of Smiths. A lot of Smiths. Ultimately ending by Neo flying away. Neo now knows that the Keymaker is being held by a man called the Merovingian, who's later on called the Frenchman. This is where we're introduced to the weird twins that everybody remembers. The Frenchman refuses to give them the Keymaker, but his wife, who's pissed off with him, helps Neo and Trinity and Morpheus find the Keymaker. They escape with the Keymaker, but there's a big battle scene. Neo kills some people again. There's a big car chase scene where the weird twins, who are also ghosts, I guess, chasing down Trinity and Morpheus, trying to get the Keymaker back. Morpheus ends up on top of a truck with the Keymaker. Trinity just escapes on her bike. But the agents are also there now. They're trying to get the Keymaker. They're trying to stop everything. And ultimately, we end up with two trucks crashing into each other while Morpheus comes along and saves the day by flying, catching Morpheus and the Keymaker and saving the day, all while the weird twins also die in a fire. Although they kind of just float away, you do see their ghosts go into the sky. Now that they have the Keymaker, Neo can visit the Architect, who at the time when this movie came out, everybody took the piss out of this scene because he looked like Colonel Sanders. Quite right. Interesting. The Architect says a lot of stuff to Neo, but ultimately he gives him a decision of you can either save the world or you can save Trinity. He also tells Neo that Zion will be destroyed within 24 hours if he chooses wrong. So ultimately, Neo chooses to save Trinity. He knows where she is. He's seen that vision that started a movie. So he goes, he uses his Superman powers and saves her from falling. He brings Trinity to a rooftop. She's bleeding out after she's been shot. But Neo saves Day by reaching inside of Trinity, taking the bullet out because he's super magically powerful now. But it doesn't stop. Trinity from dying on the spot. Similar to the way Neo died in the original Matrix movie, right at the end, Trinity now dies. But Neo is there to save the day. Inside the Matrix, he has the power to reach inside her once more, grab her heart, and restart it. Because that, that makes sense. But shut up, don't question it. We now end up outside the Matrix. Neo, Trinity, Morpheus, they're all there. And ultimately, the Nebuchadnezzar the big ship we've seen in two movies so far gets blown up by the machines. The machines are now coming for the humans and Neo puts his hand out and uses his magical matrix powers to stop the machines in the machine world. But this ends up knocking out Neo. It's taken all of his energy and he's completely KO'd. Earlier in the movie, there was a scene where we saw Agent Smith duplicate himself into another agent and then escape the Matrix through the phone system. There's also a point where we see a man try to attack Neo in the real world, but he's stopped. Later on at the end of the movie, when Neo is on the table, he's knocked out, the camera pans over, and the man who was going to attack Neo earlier, but was stopped, he's also knocked out. And the movie ends with a knocked out Neo on a table and everyone not sure what's happening and the movie says to be concluded. But this is where the Matrix Revolutions begins. It picks up exactly where we left off. Machines are about to attack Zion. Neo is KO'd on the table, so is the other dude. We haven't really known much about him so far. But an interesting thing happens. They realize that Neo still has a lot of brain activity. He's not unconscious. He's in the Matrix, but he's not connected to the Matrix. How does this happen? But ultimately, we then find out that Neo is on a train platform between the two worlds. He's stuck. He's introduced to a little girl who's going to be given away by her parents. She's a program, but they want to send her into the real world somehow. Trinity and Morpheus end up going to see the Oracle, but the Oracle is now replaced. She's a different woman, but she's still the Oracle. They go to great lengths to point out that she's just in a different body. Same person, different body. The new Oracle, then tells Trinity and Morpheus that they have to go see the Maravindian, the Frenchman, and that he can help them get Neo. He's their only hope. He's the one who controls the train platform. So Seraph, Trinity, and Morpheus all go, kick the shit out of some people, and end up facing off with the Maravindian. He tells them that he wants the Oracle's eyes in return for Neo returning. Trinity puts a gun to his head and says, how about I just kill you? And then Maravindian basically just goes, okay, uh, you can have Neo back. So Trinity goes to the train platform, she gets Neo back, 
and now plans are in motion. They have Neo back, they can save the world. However, all the captains of all the different ships are still trying to get back to Zion, but Zion is now preparing for an attack from the machines. Neo is now getting visions of the robot city. Ultimately, we end up at a point where Neo comes to everybody on the ship and says, I need to take a ship to the machine city. It's the only way I can save the world. So after one bitchy little captain gives out about it, Jada Pinkett Smith plays Niobe. She gives Neo his ship. One ship is gonna to head to Zion and Neo's gonna take the other ship to the machine city. Trinity then tells Neo she's going with him. She won't take no for an answer. So Trinity and Neo set off on their ship and the others head off to Zion. However, the previous man who was also unconscious with Neo, he's woken up since. But it's very clear that he's Agent Smith. You can tell his true speech pattern. Ultimately, he ends up killing the doctor or the person that was helping him on the ship and he ends up escaping. He ends up on Neo and Trinity's ship. A battle ensues on the ship between Neo and the new Agent Smith while Trinity is trapped below. This ends up with Neo being blinded when Agent Smith strikes him in the face with a electrical cord and burns his eyes. However, Neo being the one can still see Agent Smith, much to Agent Smith's chagrin, and he basically knocks his head off with a pipe. Cut to the other ship and to Zion where the battle ensues between the machines and the people. The battle rages on, we see a lot of bullets fly, a lot of machines go down, a lot of humans go down, and ultimately they have one hope. The final ship is coming home to Zion, and if they get there they can set off an EMP that will destroy all the machines in the city. Ultimately they do that. They get into the city, they set off the EMP, and it seems like the humans have won. However, there's one guy in the city who's not happy about it, and he says all they've done is turn off their defenses and more machines are gonna come. Sure enough, more machines come. So facing down certain doom, all they can do is set up to battle again. However, Neo and Trinity set off to the machine city. Neo now has this super blind light power. He can see things just very differently. The machines attack Neo and Trinity's ship, causing Neo and Trinity having to go into the sky to escape them. They burst through the clouds, they see the sun in the real world for the first time, at least Trinity does, and they end up crashing down into the machine city. This is where Trinity dies. Because when the ship crashed, Trinity was impaled on four to five metal rods, and Neo and Trinity have an emotional goodbye scene where they ultimately kiss for one last time. Neo then goes and speaks to the machines. The machines all form a face, and Neo says to this weird looking face that I want peace. That Agent Smith has now taken over the Matrix. There's nothing they can do about it, but there's something he can do about it. And in return, he wants peace. So the machines send him into the Matrix for one final battle with Agent Smith. Neo and Smith face off in the rain as a load of other Smiths watch on. It's just 1v1. They fight outside in the rain. They fight inside a building. They fight in the air. They fight in a puddle. They fight everywhere possible. And ultimately, Agent Smith smashes Neo into the ground and stands victorious. However, Neo keeps getting up. So Agent Smith uses his power to turn Neo into another Smith, this time successfully, after he tried doing it in the second movie and didn't quite work. Neo is now an Agent Smith. However, in the real world, he kind of like does this weird shake thing and then some light appears. All of a sudden, all of the Agent Smiths start to crack and lights start to appear and they all explode into beams of light. Again, we see Neo violently shake and all that's left in the puddle is the Oracle. Oh yeah, Agent Smith took over the Oracle earlier in the movie, I forgot about that. But now Neo, it looks like he's dead in the machine world. He's on a platform, he's not breathing, he's laying completely still, and all of a sudden the platform he's lying on begins to just sail away into the machine world. However, we then get a scene with the Oracle where she meets Seraph and the little girl from earlier in the movie. The little girl then says to the Oracle, will we ever see Neo again? And she says, I believe we will one day. And that's where the Matrix ends. There's now peace between man a machine, Trinity is dead. We think Neo is dead, but we've been told he'll probably come back. And now there's a new Matrix movie, which has Neo and Trinity in it. So that, that'll be interesting to see where that goes. But that's my quick recap of the three original Matrix movies. Let me know in the comment section below, which of the two sequels so far do you think is the best? And do you think Matrix Resurrections is actually gonna be any good? But with all that being said and done, thank you so much for watching.